Welcome Cherubs. We're working with section 7.4, Similarity in Right Triangles. And we are going to kick off with this first theorem, which says the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle into two triangles that are similar to the original triangle and also to each other. So if we have this triangle, then triangle ABC, the big triangle, is similar to the medium triangle that we have there, which we are going to call ADB, which is similar to triangle BDC. Now when we name that state, go through that statement, does everybody, I want you to recognize that we are going up the long leg, then the short. So that, that is the pattern we have to continue on. So for the next triangle, down the long, then the short. And then if we continue this again, then we would have to go down the long and then this way for that small triangle. So here we are asked to write, what similarity statement can we write relating the three triangles in this diagram? So if we go through here, I like starting at the bottom left. We can go Z, I'm sorry, I will start at the top right. That'll make it a little bit easier. X, Z, X, Y, Z. So down the short, then the long. That would be similar to X, W, Y. Which is going to be similar to Y, W, Z. Then it asks us to, using the similarity statement, to write two different proportions using the ratio wx to wy. So wx to wy. Now this is working off of our middle triangle. So wx to wy, wx, we're going this way. So that would be yx is similar to wy, which is this way. So that would be similar to yz. And wx to wy, we can do it using this, the last triangle, that would be wy matches up with wz. So what similarity statement can we write relating the three triangles in this diagram? So here we can say triangle QPR similar to triangle QSP, which is similar to triangle PSR. And SR to SP, so SR to SP, that would be SP to SQ, and we're doing another one, SR to SP, That would be PR to PQ. This brings us to the geometric mean. And the geometric mean says that for any two positive numbers A and B, the geometric mean of A and B is the positive number X, such that A over X equals X over B. So we can cross multiply which means x squared would equal ab, and then we would continue solving that, taking the square root of that, and x, so I'll write this out, x squared equals the square root of ab, which would then be x equals the square root of ab. Now, you need to be able to simplify square roots. So I'm going to start with the square root of 20 just because that one's a little bit easier. You divide by the largest known perfect square. So the biggest perfect square that goes into 20 is 4. So 4 times 5 is 20. So we can take the square root of 4, which is 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 5. When we look at 72, 72, perfect square, we can divide, try dividing by 4. That gives us 18, but I think there's something bigger that we can go in there. So 72, we can divide by 9. That gives us 8. But let's try 16. 72 divided by 16. Or 72 divided by 36. Ah, there we go. 
36 is the biggest perfect square. So the square root of 36 is 6, and we can't take the square root of 2, so we leave it at 6, the square root of 2. So please take some time to make sure you remember how to simplify square roots. So finding the geometric mean. What is the geometric mean of 6 and 15? So we would do 6 over x equals x over 15. We'd like to set that up. So working together, this is going to be x equals the square root of 6 times 15, and we can work that all the way out there. So x equals the square root of 90. The biggest perfect square that goes into 90 is 9 and 10. So this would be x equals 3 times the square root of 10. Geometric mean of 4 and 18. 4 over x equals x over 18. So x equals the square root of 4 times 18. So the square root of 4 is 2. So we can kind of work this out. So this would be 2 times the square root of 18. But 18 you can still take the square root of. So if you have 2 and then this can get broken down into 9 and 2. So this could be 6, because the square root of 9 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and we still have that square root of 2 underneath there. So that would be 6 times the square root of 2. Now, we can use the geometric mean to write proportions using lengths in right triangles without thinking through the similar triangles. So, if you think of this as for triangle 1, we'll do this in blue, this is the short, uh, let me write this outside here, inside I mean. This is short, this is the long leg. And if we did the other triangle, for triangle 2 here, in red, this is the short side, and here is the long. So we can set up a proportion of short leg of triangle 1 to the long leg of triangle 1 has to equal the short leg of triangle 2 to the long leg of triangle 2. So if we did this A, B, C, D, then short of triangle 1, that would be CD to BD has to equal BD to AD. And notice we have the same thing here, so we're going to have our geometric mean there. So using that concept, we have something we can that is often referred to as the T-theorem, which says the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. So what we have here is AD to CD, AD to CD, now I'm using these in alphabetical order, that will equal, so this is going this direction, equals CD to BD. So if you notice, it kind of creates a little T there. Those arrows create a T. Now I know it looks a little bit funky there, but it does sort of create a T. So if we're looking at this, that's what we get out of here. So if we're looking at this, this triangle here, we can create a T here. So we can do 8 over 4 would equal, so we came this way, now we're going to go back the way we came, would equal 4 over 2. And hopefully everybody recognizes that 8 over 4 and 4 over 2 do both reduce to 2, so those will work. And that could work the other way as well. For example, if we did it this way, if we did 2 over 4, and then come back and do 4 over 8, it'll work that way as well. So that is the T theorem. And that brings us to the next one called the V-theorem, 
says the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So A, B, C, and we'll have D here. Now I'm labeling that that way because with right triangles we typically have the hypotenuse represented by the lowercase letter C, so we're using the right angle C, labeling the right angle C here. So the V theorem, this is going to go like this. So AB to CB will equal, now we're going to come back, CB to BD. And if you see that little V in the corner there, it works. And we could also set this up a different way. So that's one way. The other way we could do it is C is, uh, we'll do it this way, B A A B. Uh, you know, I'm going to write it with the letters this direction. I think it'll make more sense. I'll do a different color. B A to A C we're going to come back down is AC to AD. So there are two ways that you could set this up. So here's a little example. <clears throat> so we could go here. This would be 4 to 2 would equal 2 to 1. So that is the V theorem, and if you recognize that, 4 over 2 is equal to 2 over 1. So, a little summary here. If this whole length here is B, and this would be side 1, length 1, we'll call this A, and we have side 2, short 2, I'm sorry, and working off of here. So then applying this S1 over A would equal A over S2. Then over here we have 2 H2 L1 would equal L1 to S sub 1 and the second one is H over L sub 2 would equal L sub 2 to S sub 2. So how do we use these corollaries? <clears throat> so we have the T theorem and the V theorem. What are the values of X and Y? So in this one, we can set up here. This whole piece is 9. So we can do 9 to X equals X over 4. So that is using the V theorem. So 9 to x equals x to 4. That is using the V theorem. So we can solve that. That will give us x squared equals 36, which makes x equal to 6. Now we can find y by using the T theorem. So this would be 4 over y equals y over 5, y squared equals 20, which means y would equal 2 times the square root of 5. And again, we're going to work this out here. So we can use the V theorem. So this is 16. So 16 over x would equal x over 4. So that is x squared equals 64, which means x equals 8. And we can use the T theorem. So, so that is use the T theorem here to find y. We can do 12 over y equals y over 4. So that is y squared equals 48. 48 is divisible by 16. 
So y would equal 4 times the square root of 3. So those are the values. That's how we work with that. So how can we use this? Now the first sentence, this is a little bit tricky to read. The 300 meter path to the park to the information center and the 400 meter path to the canoe rental dock meet at a right angle. So this is the 300 here. Here's the 400 part here. Here is the right angle at C. Maria walks straight from the parking lot to the lake as shown. So she got out of her car and went here. Where a sign tells her that she is 320 meters from the dock. So from here to the dock down here where the canoe rental is, is 320. How far is Maria from the information center? So here we can set up a proportion here. So now if you are looking at this, you notice you have a right triangle. So we have 300, 400. This is going to be AB because it's a 3, 4, 5. This has to be 500. So we recognize that. So when you see that, that's not too difficult to figure out that X is going to be 180. But here we can use a proportion to set this up. So we can use the V theorem here. So here we can go from C to B. So this would be 400 over 320 plus X. And that would equal, now we're coming back down. I should have done this a different way. Let me write this a different way. So we can do x plus 320, coming this way, over 400 equals 400 over 320. So we can work with this. Those zeros cancel out. And 8 goes into both of those, so we can reduce this to 5 over 4 equals x plus 320 over 400. And you can cross multiply. So 5 times 400 is 2,000. 2,000 equals 4x plus, now 4 times 320 is 1,280. So we can subtract that from 2,000, and that is 720 equals 4x. 720 divided by 4, x equals 180. So that is using the V theorem. But you could have also used the Pythagorean theorem if you recognize that. So a little bit more practice, and these make use of this a little bit more. So here we can figure out the value of x. So here we can do 10 over x equals, now we're coming back, x over 5. And we can figure out y with 5 over y equals y over 5. So here we'd have x squared equals 50, which means x will equal 5 times the square root of 2. And with this one, we'll have y squared equals 25, which means y equals 5. And we can continue on here. So here we can work with this. x plus 50 over 100 would equal 100 over 50. And we can reduce this. x plus 50 over 100, that is really just 2 to 1. So this is 200 equals x plus 50, which means x equals 150. So once you find x, now we can find y. So if this is 150, now we can do use y. We can have 200 over y equals y over 150. So y squared 
200 times 150 is 30,000. And we can take the square root of that, divide that by 1,000. That's 30, so y, that would be, I'm sorry, 30,000. We can take the square root of that. Thirty thousand divided by ten thousand, that would be three, so this would be one thousand times the square root of three. And here we've got this is 60, so we can, if this is 40, that means this over here is 20. So we can use the uh, t and the v theorem here again. So 40 over x equals x over 20. So x squared, 40 times 20 is 800. And we can divide 800 can break that down into 108 and so that is going to break down into 10 and 10 4 and 2 2 and 2 so x will equal 20 times the square root of 2 and to find y we can again use 60 over y equals y over 20 y squared equals 1200 if we divide that by we can break this down into 12 and 100 as we had before this can break down into 6 and 2 10 and 10 so we have a pair here 3 and 2 so this is y would equal 20 times the square root of 3. And finally, this side here, this whole piece here is 30. So we can do 21 over y equals y over 9 for the t theorem. And we can do 30 over x equals x over 9. And you can finish those off. Make sure you get some practice in there. Take it easy. Let me know if you have any questions.